अभी देखना है चालू हुआ देख गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स दिस इज प्रोफेसर रमेश कुमार मेहता दिस इज माई फोर्थ वीडियो ऑन फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट एंड रेशन एनालिसिस इन द लास्ट थ्री वीडियोज आई हैव कवर्ड वॉट इज फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट हाउ टू एनालाइज इट वॉट आर द रेशियोज वॉड्यू मीन बाई रेशियोज वॉड्यू मीन बाई रेशन एनालिसिस एंड इन दो रेशन एनालिसिस अप टू दिस स्टेज वी हैव कवर्ड liquidity ratio and uh, capital structure ratios now today we are going to see some more set of ratios to understand and analyze the balance sheet and the profit and loss account of the company okay now so we have now the third set of ratios which are called as profitability ratios see fundamentally the company is not only interested in knowing the solvency position of the company the liquidity position of the company as well as the most important parameter on which the company uh, progress is measured is through the profitability of the company if the company is able to generate more profits the company is said to be a very good company so there are various methods of understanding and uh, analyzing the company under uh, through uh, profitability ratios some of the profitability ratios which i am going to study which we are going to explain it to you are profit margin gross profit margin net profit margin return on investments some expenses ratio are also going to be covered apart from this we are going to talk about operating profit margin operating margin earnings per share so on and so forth let's start one by one so that we will understand profitability ratios one of the fundamental things to understand profitability is profitability ratio is please understand profit is also termed as returns profit is also termed as earnings profit is also termed as yield again i am going to uh, i will i will just re 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 recap uh, what i have said just now profit is measured or uh, can be understood in terms of earnings can be under, understood in terms of returns and it also can be understood in terms of yield okay so these are all synonyms okay next one another fundamental thing or uh, 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 point is all the time profit should be very high then only the company said to be moving in the right direction next one the first ratio under profit margin ratio is gross profit margin or gross profit percentage now gross profit is nothing but it is derived or calculated from the trading manufacturing and trading account the formula for gross profit is sales minus cost of goods sales minus cost of goods sold this particular uh, discussion was already covered in the last uh, video you can revert back to the last video from where we can understand how to calculate gross profit margin so gross profit margin is nothing but sales minus cost of goods sold now in order to calculate gross profit margin gross profit margin is calculated by using the formula gross profit by sales into 100 please remember its margin its percentage okay so if you look at the if you look at the if you look at the the formula if you look at the formula uh, if you look at the formula gross profit margin is gross profit by sales into 100 gross profit is so gross profit margin is equal to gross profit by sales into 100 please remember sales should be high profit should be high and the resultant uh, figure also should be high again i am recovering it gross profit should be high sales should be high and the resultant yield should also be high the gross profit margin should also be high next one now another set of ratios are there under net profit uh, under net profit margin net profit margin is given by the formula net profit by sales yield under and net profit margin we have some more ratios operating profit ratio net profit ratio and some tax profit ratio which i am not going to explain because the most prominent ones are the ones which i am going to cover let's see all this one by one now look at this small problem in this you will understand what do you mean by uh, net gross profit margin and net profit margin 
Now, gross profit margin, gross profit margin, uh, here the, uh, the data given to you is sales is equal to 2 lakh rupees, cost of goods sold is 1 lakh rupees, operating expenses are 50,000 rupees. So let's calculate gross profit margin. Gross profit margin, as I told, it is gross profit by sales into 100. Gross profit by sales into 100. Now, how do you calculate gross profit? So gross profit is equal to sales minus cost of goods sold. So it is 2 lakhs minus 1 lakh is equal to 2, is equal to 1 lakh. So gross profit margin is equal to gross profit by sales on sales into 100. That is 1 lakh by 2 lakhs into 100 is equal to 50 percentage. Now, what does it mean? For every one for, for every 100 rupees of your sales, the gross profit is 50 rupees. For every 100 rupees of your sale or the product selling, if the product selling price is 50 rupees, 100 rupees, sorry, the gross profit is 50 rupees. So I consider this to be a very good margin. But still, if you want to if you want to see that it is increasing, try to increase it to 50%, 60%, 70%, 70%, 70%, and what is required. Next one is net profit margin. Let's calculate net profit margin. Net profit margin is equal to here in this case you have to or reduce you have to deduct all the expenses incurred for manufacturing and selling the goods. So the man the, 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 the cost involved here in this particular problem are cost of goods sold is operating expenses. Operating expenses are expenses incurred for operating the business. So here in this case, the cost for for, for manufacturing and selling the goods are one lakh plus five thousand fifty thousand. It is one lakh fifty thousand. And because of this reason, the net profit is 50,000 because your sales are 2 lakh rupees. So sales is 2 lakh rupees, less total cost is 1 lakh 50,000 rupees. Your net profit or the final profit is 50,000 rupees. So net profit margin is equal to 50,000 by 20, 2 lakhs into 100 is equal to 25 percentage. What does it mean? It means that for every 100 rupees of your selling price, if you're selling the product at 100 rupees, you're bound to make a profit of 25 rupees, which is also a reasonably good amount of rupees, good amount. There are some more expenses ratios. So I will just um, uh, read out the formulas and if permits, we'll do some problems also. But this exp this, these are expenses ratios which are required to be known and understood. Now the first expense ratio is cost of goods sold ratio. Cost of goods sold ratio is already understood. It is nothing but the cost incurred for manufacturing the goods by Net sales into 100. If it's a, so, the fundamental rule is the cost should be low, the sale should be high, and the resultant cost percentage should be less. Because, as I told you in the previous uh, video, that every time your sale should be high and your cost should be low. Next one is operating expenses. To operate the business, there are, there are two types of expenditures which are incurred office and administration expenses, and selling and distribution expenses. So, it so operating expenses measures the ratio of administration expenses and selling expenses in your net sales. So it is given by the formula administration expenses plus selling expenses divided by net sales into 100. So the numerator should be low, your administration expenses should be low, your selling expenses should be low and your selling price or sale should be high and the resultant should be low because we are talking about operating expenses, expenses incurred for operating the business. So it should be low. Next one is administration expenses. Administration expenses means expenses incurred for administering or taking care of the office and administration part, some expenses are incurred. So administration expenses are measured in, 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 the, in terms of administration expenses by net sales into 100. So administration expenses are considered to should be low and sales should be high and the resultant percentage of administration expenses as a percentage of net sales, net sales should be Low. Next one is selling expenses ratio. Selling expenses ratio is selling expenses by net sales, into 100, net sales into 100. So your selling expenses are cost and the cost should be low. Sales should be high and the resultant selling expenses as a part of your sale should be low. Next one is operating expense, operating ratio. Operating ratio is nothing but the cost incurred for operating the whole business to conduct the business is called as operating ratio. The, this is the most, most important part of our uh, expenses ratio and this is given by the formula cost of goods sold plus operating expenses by net sales into 100. We have a small numeric in the next PPT. We will try to solve some problems. So don't worry. Operating ratio is equal to cost of goods sold. Already I told you what is cost of goods sold. It is nothing but sales minus gross profit. 
plus operating expenses. I told you operating expenses are administration expenses and selling expenses. So the numerator should be low and sales should be high into 100 and, and the resultant uh, uh, yield uh, that is the cost incurred for running the business or the operating cost ratio or operating ratio should also be low. Next one is financial expenses. There are some expenses incurred for uh, in terms of finan financial expenses like interest on loan taken, uh, loan processing fees, uh, etc., etc. So these expenses also are to be recovered from recovered from our selling price or from sales. So these expenses should be low. And the ratio for financial expenses ratio are financial expenses by net sales in 100. So financial expenses should be low. Our selling price should be high, and the relative cost should be low. So financial expenses ratio should be always low. Next one. Now we will do a problem on gross profit margin. So I have a, uh, I, I have highlighted some of the uh, exp, uh, some of the items in this particular PPT. If you look carefully, sales is uh, uh, three and a half lakhs, and my gross profit is one lakh twenty six thousand. So if, if I am calculating gross profit margin, then the formula is gross profit by sales into hundred. So here the gross profit is one lakh twenty six thousand, and the sales are to the extent of to the tune of three lakh fifty thousand rupees. So Gross profit margin is equal to 1,26,000 divided by 3.5 lakhs into 100 is equal to 36%. So at the bottom there is an answer. 1,26,000 into 3.5 lakhs divided into 3.5 lakhs. 1,26,000 divided by 3.5 lakhs into 100 is equal to 36%. Means what? For every 100 rupees of your sales, your gross profit is 36%. So the remaining 64% is the expenses incurred for manufacturing the goods. Okay, next one. Next one is net profit margin. Net profit margin is in, in this particular problem. Also, I, I have highlighted in blue color the net profit of uh, net profit of the company, the sales of the company. If you look at the bottom, the net profit of the company is seventy seven thousand rupees, and the sales are to the tune of three and a half lakh rupees. So net profit margin is seventy seven thousand divided by three and a half lakhs, three and a half lakhs into hundred is equal to twenty two percentage. So so what does it mean for every 100 rupees of your sales if your selling price is, to, uh, is uh, 100 rupees in that selling price of 100 rupees you are on the selling price of 100 rupees your cost is 78 rupees and your profit is 22 rupees so 22 rupees your profit 78 rupees is your cost and selling price is 100 rupees so 22 percentage to my knowledge to my understanding to my in my experience whatever i have seen is a nominally good reasonable uh, net profit margin still the company can Take uh, try uh, take uh, efforts to reduce the cost, and then they can improve the margin. Next one. Now let's talk about operating profit ratio, operating profit margin. This is also very very important in stock markets in capital markets. Whenever the companies are announcing their quarterly results or annual results or half yearly results, they 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 compare uh, operating profit from intra firm. Uh, 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 within interform, uh, within interform comparison is done, and as well as they are uh, they are uh, comparing uh, last year's uh, last quarters or last year's uh, uh, operate, operating profit margin. Now, what do you mean by operating profit margin? Let's see how to calculate it. So, you got a data in front of you. Sales are again three and a half lakhs. I'm just repeating the uh, the numeric so that you will be in a comfortable position. Now, operating profit is we will calculate it. So sales is given as three and a half lakh rupees. Now the formula for operating profit ratio is net profit plus non-operating expenses minus net uh, minus uh, sorry I have repeated net profit you can uh, discard it plus non-operating incomes. So operating profit is given by the formula net profit plus non-operating expenses plus non-operating incomes. Now you can ask me sir what is non-operating expenses? Non-operating expenses see well, for doing business, raw material is required. Then only you can start uh, start manufacturing and you can sell the goods after you manufacture. Wages are required, compulsory. After you purchase the raw material, labor are called to the factory and they convert the raw material into finished goods. Factory expenses are incurred because if you once you get the raw material, once the labor is coming, you have to have a factory where you have to run the factory. Uh, there are expenses towards factory in the form of uh, power, maintenance, depreciation on machinery, 
oil, grease, so on and so forth. So these expenses incurred for manufacturing. So op in operating the business, there are so many expenditures like purchases of raw material, wages towards labor, factory expenses, administration expenses, and selling and distribution of expenses. But if you look at, at, at the other items in the profit and loss account, loss on sale of land, the company is selling a part of the land and they have seen, incurred some loss on it. So this is not a loss because of doing a regular business. This is not a loss on doing a, uh, in conducting a regular business. So this item has to be disregarded. This should not be included in the net profit. This should not be included in the expenditure because this is not a re recurring expenditure or recurring loss. This should be ignored. So that is the reason why I am deducting it. Please remember, there is a small change in the uh, 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 formula. The formula is net profit plus non-operating expenses uh, minus non-operating incomes. Okay. I have uh, um, shown on the uh, PPT, shown in the PPT plus we just disregard it and uh, replace it with minus. So next one, if you come on the right side, that is on the income side of the profit and loss account, you have profit and sale of uh, furniture. They got some furniture with them, and during the year they thought of selling it, which is not their normal business or regular business. This is only once in time like like once in time transaction. This is an abnormal transaction. So they have sold a part of the machinery and they have made a profit. Now, is this the profit? Is this the profit what they have made from the regular business? No, it is not a regular business income. So what I should do? I have to reduce it from my profit. So hence, because of this reason, operating profit, you have in front of you operating profit calculations. So operating profit is net profit plus non-operating expenditure minus non-operating income. Okay. So if I calculate, the answer is like this operating profit is equal to 77,000. So the figure of net profit is 77,000 plus 4,000 is the loss on sale of land. This is not an expenditure, regular expenditure. So I am adding it back minus non operating income. This is not an income which is on regular basis. This is a non operating income. So I will deduct it, deduct it or subtract it. So 77,000 plus 4,000 minus 10,000. The amount is rupees 71,000. So the net op operating profit or the final net operating profit or the operating profit, which is called as EBIT, earnings before interest and tax or profit before interest and tax is 71,000. This is the business profit or operating profit or profit earned from operating the business, from the operations of the business. So that is 71,000. So out of your total sales of three and a half lakh rupees, you are you have made a business profit or operating profit of seventy one thousand rupees, which is roughly around twenty percentage. Twenty percentage in this case it is twenty point three percentage. This is the way you calculate the operating profit margin. Next one. Now the next ratio is again very important ratio, which is operating operating ratio, operating margin or operating ratio. Now the previous one was operating profit margin. The this is operating margin. What do you mean by operating margin? Operating margin is the total expenditure incurred for manufacturing a particular commodity or the total cost incurred for manufacturing goods. So what should be considered? So all the expenses which are incurred, like raw material cost, labor cost, factory overheads, operating or uh, office and administration overheads selling and distribution overheads, which are incurred for manufacturing and selling the goods have to be incurred, have to be uh, considered for finding out what is the total cost incurred for, for, uh, for operating the business. So I'm repeating what are the expenses to be included to arrive at the operating cost. So it will be the first, first is the raw material cost. The second one is the wage cost or the labor cost. The third one is factory overheads or factory expenses all the expenses incurred in the factory. Next one is uh, uh, office overheads. The, th uh, the second set is uh, administration overheads. The next one is selling overheads. And the final one is distribution overheads. So all these expenses have to be considered for finding out operating ratio because all these costs are incurred for manufacturing the final product before it is sold. So operating profit uh, ratio is given by the formula cost of goods sold plus operating expenses by sales into 100. Already I was shown in the previous uh, previous PPT, 
that operating ratio is equal to cost of goods sold plus operating expenses by sales into 100 because cost of goods sold is one cost and operating expenditure is another set of costs by this we have included in the in cost of goods sold raw material cost wage cost and factory audits and in operating expenses we have covered or added administration and selling and distribution audits okay by sales into 100 now how do you find out cost of goods sold already i told you it is sales minus gross profit now already we have calculated so calculations are in front of you as far as sales of goods cost of uh, goods are uh, cost of goods sold is considered so cost of goods sold is equal to sales minus gross profit sale is three and a half lakh rupees as shown in the ppt and gross profit is one lakh twenty six thousand so the cost of goods sold is two lakh twenty four thousand now let's calculate operating expenses operating expenses include two items administration expenses and selling and distribution expenses in the given ppt administration expenses are uh, are 45,000 and the selling and distribution audits are 10,000. So if you submit, it is 55,000 rupees. So now let's calculate operating ratio or operating expenses ratio or operating cost ratio. Now operating cost ratio is equal to cost of goods sold plus operating expenses by sales into 100. That is equal to 224,000 plus 55,000 is equal to 275,000 divided by 3 and a half lakhs that is the sales into 100 it is 80 percentage or 79.7 percent one percentage another way of calculation of a uh, profit margin profit uh, operating profit uh, operating cost margin or operating margin is equal to one minus operating profit margin if you look in the previous slide it is 20 point uh, operating profit margin is 20.3 percentage so from one if i remove 20.3 percentage that is 79.7 percentage is the operating profit margin operating cost margin sorry so if you want to find out operating profit margin, you have to you can do this calculation. This for, this format can be followed, or these steps can be followed. Another way is after you calculating after you have calculated operating profit margin, in order to find out operating cost margin, just from one one you deduct operating profit margin. So one minus twenty point three is equal to seventy nine point seven. So you get the same answer. So this is about operating profit operating cost margin. Next one is so till so far we have seen uh, profit under profitability ratios uh, gross profit margin net profit margin expenses ratios uh, operating profit margin operating expenses margin and other set of cost expenses uh, cost or expenses uh, ratios now there are some more uh, profitability uh, ratios the most important one is return on investments and return on capital employed now return on investments is see the company has invested a lot of money in the business they have invested a lot of money in the total assets of the company so how what is the rate of return you are getting from the total assets of the company is very very essential for example i have considered three banks i have one i have three lakh rupees with me in one bank i am going to invest one lakh rupees in the other bank i am going to invest in fixed deposit one lakh rupees and the third bank i am going to invest one lakh rupees in the fixed deposit if the first company first bank is giving 8% rate of return the second company is going to give me 6% rate of return and the third company is bank is give, going to give me 10% rate of return let's calculate the, the the ratio that is return on my fixed deposit so in the first case i am earning 8000 rupees in the second case i am earning 6000 rupees in the third case it is 10000 rupees annually so 8 plus 6 plus 10 is 24000 so on 3 lakh rupees i am earning 24000 rupees which is 8 percentage so the return from my fixed deposit or from my investment uh, is eight percentage. The same way, if anybody is doing business, they are interested in interested in calculating and analyzing what is the return on total assets, what is the return on capital employed, what is the return on investment, or what is the return on equity, so on and so forth. So, return on investments. There are various forms of calculation. The first one is return on assets. Now, what do you mean by assets? If you look on the balance sheet of the company, right side. You have total assets means you have you have this many amount this much amount of assets the uh, assets are some 50 crore rupees example on this 50 crores what is the return you are getting you are invested you are invested your money in 50 lakh rupees so that is on on procurement of your fixed assets now the fixed assets are invested you are investing money in fixed assets how effectively they are uh, utilized how productively 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 they are utilized and what is the return they are giving at the end of the year and throughout the life span of the 
particular asset. So return on assets is equal to earnings after tax plus interest minus tax advantage on interest by average total assets. So I will give a small example. I have in my company XYZ Limited has invested 50 lakh rupees in uh, in on the total assets, and I have used these two assets for producing goods, and I have sold them. After I sell the finished product, finished goods, I will try to find out what is my net profit, and assuming my net profit is five lakh rupees, so return on total assets is equal to profit by total assets. My profit is five lakh rupees. And my investments in the total assets are 50 lakh rupees. So 5 lakhs by 50 lakhs is 10 percentage. Is it good? I, to my knowledge, it's uh, only plus two percentage over and above the bank rate of interest. Bank, bank rate of interest. So the company has to take efforts to improve the return on assets. Similarly, one another way of calculating return on investments are return on capital employed. If you remember, in the last, uh, uh, in the first video, I showed you. What are the items of capital employed? See, if you want to do business, you require capital. And for a public limited company, I told you what are the various sources. I told you some of the important uh, uh, some avenues from where you can uh, raise capital or acquire capital for smooth conduction of your business. The first one was equity share capital. The second one was resource and surplus or retained earnings, we call it. The fourth one, the third one is preference share capital. The fourth one is debt capital and many other items so capital employed is given by the formula equity share capital plus reserves and surplus plus debt capital so whatever funds were required whatever capital is required you got it from various sources and you have invested in the business now everybody is interested in knowing what has happened what is the return i am getting it on the total capital what I have employed in the business so if you want to want to calculate uh, return on capital employed it is given by the formula Earnings after tax, earnings after tax plus interest minus tax advantage on interest by average total capital employed. So earnings should be high and total capital employed should be low and the resultant return on capital should be very, very high. Next one. So on the similar lines, uh, I, have show, uh, I have some two more uh, real shows on uh, return on equity. I will just ask you to read out, read out and analyze on your way, uh, on your, in your own way as I just told uh, may, may you understand what is the return on total capital employed and return on total assets in the same on the similar lines you can uh, understand return on total shareholders equity and return on ordinary shareholders equity now uh, some more uh, ratios under uh, uh, efficiency ratio we are go now going to talk about efficiency ratios so efficiency ratio measures the the efficiency with which you are able to use your assets use your assets assets should be used productively efficiently so that they are uh, controlling the cost they are producing the goods at the lowest cost and then with minimum inventory with minimum raw material with minimum work in progress with minimum total assets or assets you are able to convert them into finished goods and then you are able to sell already we have seen inventory turnover ratio and on the same lines you can understand the material turnover ratio and work in progress turnover ratio let's see some more efficiency ratios so we have seen in the last video returns turnover ratio. We have seen, let's talk about uh, some more assets turnover ratio. So the next set of ratios under uh, activity ratios are total assets turnover ratio, fixed assets turnover ratio, capital uh, capital turnover ratio, current assets turnover ratio, working capital turnover ratio. So I will give a small example before we go into what do you mean by total assets turnover ratio. See, to, if you look at the word total assets turnover ratio, it is divided into two parts, total assets and turnover. Total assets and turnover. So turnover, you have, you should have more amount of turnover in comparison to your total assets. You should have more amount of turnover in comparison with your total assets. So the formula for total assets turnover ratio is sales by average total assets or sales can be replaced by the word cost of goods sold by average total assets so both should be high both should be high because sales should be high and assets total assets should be to my to, to some extent it should be low and it, it has to be productively utilized and effectively utilized and maximum utilization of your total assets and your uh, capacity utilization of the factory should be very high 
So that is the meaning of the word total sets turnover ratio. Now the question asked, you can ask sir, why are you using the word cost of goods sold and uh, why uh, uh, in place of sales? See sales, there is a difference between cost of goods sold and sales. There is cost if there is net profit, uh, net profit in between sales and cost. So the net profit can be high. It can be more. So that's the reason why I have considered cost of goods sold or it can be replaced by sales also. There is no issues. So I will continue uh, from this uh, set of ratios in the next uh, video and we will join. I will join you immediately. Thank you very much for patience.